welcome back to another episode of the Afro Global Conversation, where we discuss on global issues from an African perspective. Today, I'm joined by a panel of four discussants discussing the issue of Kenya and Somali relations. The diplomatic relations between Kenya and Somalia has been seen to be escalating to warring levels. This has been revealed in a letter from the government of Kenya through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Somalia. This letter was making reference to two press releases released by the Federal Republic of Somalia on the 5th of February 2020 and the 27th February of 2020. There was also a universal television interview on the 14th of February whereby the permanent representative of Somalia to the United Nations accused Kenya of interfering with the international affairs of Somalia. Tim, what's your take on this? In the international arena, every state exists to pursue its interest. So Kenya basically is trying to pursue its own interest, its own national interest in Somalia. Indeed, that is very true. Kenya seeks to ensure that its interests are secured both regionally and globally. For the case of Somalia, Kenya has a lot of interest there. It hosts Somali refugees and it would like to see Somalia regain peace very quickly so that it can have their people go back and rebuild their country. In its foreign policy, one of the pillars is peace diplomacy. And uh, under that uh, policy, Kenya seeks and it acknowledges that it cannot survive in an environment where there is instability. And its own stability is very closely tied to the regional stability. And uh, it has a lot of interest in Somalia. It has engaged Somalia in a number of ways to try and reconstruct the country. We have our troops there under mandate of uh, the United Nations, a peace enforcement mandate. Uh, we have Somali people, we have Kenyan diaspora in Somalia working there to try and build rebuild that country. And so, indeed, Kenya has a right to pursue its interests in Somalia. It's important for the Kenyan government to make sure there is peace in Somalia. The Kenyan, the, there are a lot of there are a lot of Kenyans in Somalia, whereby there are more than five thousand teachers who teach in Somalia. The peace, well, if there will be no peace in Somalia, they will definitely the peace will escalate back to Kenya because Kenya, Nairobi is like the second capital city of Somalia. We host most of their national NGOs are are hosted in Nairobi. This will like create more like problem if there will be war in Somalia. Definitely, there will be an interlink of the war between Somalia and Kenya, which will be a very big problem. Uh, it is very true that uh, Kenya has some interest in Somalia. But uh, the accusations, uh, we can say that the accusations are true, but somehow we can also use, uh, we can look at it as a cover-up by the Somali government. There's a lot of uh, issues that people say when a government internally is not performing, the best way is to blame others for their misfortune so that they can get re-election. Remember there are things that are happening. One is that Somali is about to go for an election, either towards the end of this year 2020 or the start of next year 2021. The government, uh, from the stories that are there, is that the government has not been able to perform. And uh, based on that background, the Somali government has uh, an interest in making sure that they need a cover-up, someone to blame. The issue of blaming people for these kind of things, I think, is not a, a phenomenon that is unique to Somalia. Uh, remember in 2016, the US blamed uh, Russians for interfering in the elections. So it is not new that Somali is, is blaming Kenya for their own internal problems. And in fact, uh, Kenya, what I think many people would agree is that Kenya has always tried and uh, tries to make sure that these peace in Somalia. But the second point is that the issues of elections and other forms of interference, they have always been there in issues of international politics. Um, Kenya has an interest to make sure that the government in Somalia come 2021 is a government that is friendly and a government that is sensitive to the issues of the Kenyan government. And the government that we have in Somalia as of today is a government that is hostile to Kenya. And Kenya has a point and, it, and Kenya needs to make sure that moving forward uh, in the 2021 elections, uh, those elections are won by someone who is friendly and someone who will help Kenya pursue our interest in Somalia. And some of these interests will be to counter terrorism. Uh, Kenya believes is a staunch believer of the principle of self-determination. Some states, like uh, Jubaland, I think Kenya would want to see someone 
who would grant this country, these are these states, um, some sort of autonomy to be able to determine uh, the, the future of themselves and their, their people. Um, in that line, I think uh, when we talk about interest and interference, uh, I think we need to look at uh, who is blaming who and where they're blaming it from. The, 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 the accusations being labeled that being done from an international stage, a stage where when someone speaks from that point, is not the information not just go to Kenya or Somalia, is information that will go across, will super across the entire continent, the entire globe. And uh, through these accusations, Somalia is trying to discredit Kenya and is trying to put Kenya on the limelight uh, of the international community when the elections are being done to get that kind of safeguarding. I've heard all of you discussing, but one question, don't you think it's high time that Kenya exits Somalia? Because at the end of the day, the spillover affects us. How are we benefiting? And the international arena advises that if you are a neighboring country, it's not, it's not good for you, for your troops to be, to be present in your neighbor's territory. Uh, I think I, I, I think when we, we talk of issues of uh, us retreating, I think it's also very important that we understand on what basis that we found ourselves there. Remember, we went there because we were pushed by a threat that was eminent to the Kenyan citizen and Kenya as a state. And this threat was the threat of Al-Shabaab. Remember, we did not want to go there. I think it was uh, been in our best interest to stay away because every time we put our boats on the ground in Somalia, it cost us money cost us a lot of money and money that we can put in other things. We can put in infrastructure, in education, or in health. But you put a lot of money in that uh, regard. Uh, to this end, um, when we decided to go to Somalia, uh, this was informed by Article 51 of the United Nations Charter, which allows for a state or a region or an organization or a collective effort to go and defend their, 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 their security, even in abroad. That was seconded by the resolution that was passed by the United Nations Security Council to allow Kenyan army to be in Somalia. Now, if we say that we want to pull our troops back, the first question that we want to ask ourselves is, are we, have, we, have we achieved the obligations that we went there to achieve? Have we achieved what we went there to look for? So is, 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 is Al-Shabaab still a threat to Kenyan security? Do we still experience those threats and those threats alerts? As long as those things exist, then I think uh, if it's to retreat, then we don't need to retreat 100%. We need to have an exit strategy, and the exit strategy needs to be informed by the threat at hand. And Al-Shabaab, until it's neutralized, Al-Shabaab still remains to be a very eminent threat to Kenya. So if it's retreating, then let's go back to the border. I think that would be the most advisable way, because Al-Shabaab has not been neutralized entirely. He is giving a take whereby the Kenyan government has gone and invaded the Somalian territory, there is an issue that's coming right now. The Somalian government has invaded the part of Mandera, which whereby there is a fugitive from Jubaland that has fled from Jubaland and came to Mandera. There is a problem whereby the Kenyan, the Kenyan civilians might be, they might feel the pain out of the war that will happen. There will be a spill of blood, which will not be a good thing. But why should the Kenyan government feel the pain of the Somalian government invading the Kenyan territory to take their fugitive. You know, it's a question that we must ask ourselves. All right. But, you know, it's so funny. As a country, we are complaining that Somali troops are invading our country, and yet our own troops are still in Somalia, surely. I think, as my colleague Chris put it, we are not invading Somalia. We are there under a mandate of peace enforcement. Mm -hmm as prescribed by the United Nations. It's not there explicitly in the charter. You will not find peace enforcement uh, in the charter, but we are there to pursue Al-Shabaab militants who are posing a threat to peace and security in Kenya. We are not there to attack Somalia or the Somali people per se. We are there after a particular group of people whose interest is to see that regional security and national security of Kenya does not uh, stabilize. And uh, calling it an invasion would be like we are violating the, the charter, especially uh, Article 2.4, that uh, we are aggressive, which is prohibited under international law. Yeah. And b besides, we have to be there in Somalia. We, we are so invested, being a neighboring state, to see Somalia stable. We have resources coming up in Somalia. We have a lot of oil deposits in Somalia. So Kenya would be in a very good position to have 
uh, help in birthing the peace in Somalia so that it can benefit from the peace and the development and the economic gains that it can get from Somalia. We, know we have other actors coming from afar. We have Americans, we have Norwegians, we have the Turkish people in Somalia. Why would we allow others to come so far who have not suffered like we have suffered and come and enjoy the benefits of a stable Somalia? So we have to be very much invested there. But my main concern is that the ex-fugitive, the minister from Jubaland, he was arrested by the national government of Somalia. He, ex he escaped prison, he came in Kenya. When the troops came in Kenya, when the Somali troops came in Kenya, we started complaining. Why? They're, they're also protecting their own interests. We shouldn't be complaining. Let it go on record that the Kenyan government is known for hosting fugitives. We have the former South Sudan chief of staff that is in, hosted in, in Kenya, which is a very wrong thing. I think we sh the Kenyan government should rethink because we are creating animosity. Uh, when we talk of uh, Kenya hosting fugitives and those kind of people, I, I, I think it's also important that we understand that we, Kenya is engaged in a process of peace, uh, conflict and peace, uh, uh, conflict resolution. And when we are talking of conflict resolution, there are factors that come into play and factors that if they are not looked into kindly, they might jeopardize any effort that has been put in place. One is that we need to understand, even in Sudan, we need to understand in Somalia that is a country that has been experiencing this issue for a very long period of time. And uh, one of the things that come up is that... Uh, those who feel that they're not being included in the government, they might go and create some other militia groups that might come in uh, as new factors into the conflict and end up jeopardizing the peace efforts that we have put in place. Now, um, Kenya is a country that believes in the principle of self-determination. And I think that has been very evident in our efforts to help uh, Saharawi get, uh, get its independence. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing that we are trying to do to make sure that we have uh, Jubaland become an, uh, I mean, a free state mm -hmm. and an independent state mm -hmm. under the international law. But when we see uh, Somali government through its armies and police coming into Kenya, that's a violation of Kenya's territorial integrity. Remember the philosophical underpinning of uh, international relations is guided by the United Nations Charter and Article 2, Subsection 3 of the United Nations Charter denote that uh, countries should always try to refrain or try to find solutions to their problems in a peaceful way. What Somali did was not finding a solution to their problems in a peaceful way, or rather it was a very aggressive way of finding solutions to the problems that we have. Instead, Somali government should have sought a channel that was peaceful and one that would have been acknowledged in the international law, that uh, there's a fugitive that is being sought after, and that fugitive uh, should be brought back to Somalia through the agreement by the government of Kenya to participate in that process through extradition of that fugitive, not them coming in and fighting on our own soil. But I like the response that the Kenyan government took. The Kenyan government is creating a monster in Jubaland, a monster that it won't fight, it, that we, it won't fight. You know, it's creating a monster like in the United States, it built, it, it had brought Al-Qaeda through which it, it had countered with ISIS, where the ISIS became a monster that it, it was hard for the United States to fight for it, fight it. So, you know, the Kenyan government should think of what it's doing in Jubaland for, give, for, for creating a monster that it won't fight. Indeed, uh, I agree with my colleague. Uh, in terms of an exit, exit strategy, we should be very careful not to follow the U.S. pattern of just leaving a space uh, with no clear guideline for the future. When, we, when the U.S. left, as he has mentioned, when the U.S. left Iraq, it allowed another monster for us to grow. And uh, for Kenya, we should be looking more, we exist in the Horn of Africa security complex, and uh, where a lot of patterns of interactions bring about enmity and sometimes even cooperation. And uh, we should move towards creating a security community, like the one that exists between the U.S. and Canada, where no hostility can be even, is unthinkable. We should... And a, and a security community should be the one that Kenya pursues in the Horn of Africa. The conversation is quite interesting. We are here talking about peace, peace building, the peace missions. And yet two, two weeks ago, 11 MPs decided to secretly go to Villa Somalia. Were they back channeling any, any diplomacy? I think it's important that we understand the context under which uh, matters of diplomacy happen.
and uh, uh, we know very well there's a ministry that is uh, dedicated to that job and when you are discussing issues of security again there's also another ministry that is dedicated to that uh, issue and if you operate within uh, the maxims of the parliament you also understand there are also standing orders that have to be followed when these things uh, this kind of things happen now when you look at the visit first is being branded a secret Secondly, they said they were going to discuss security issues in the northeastern of Kenya. So we are discussing security issues that are within Kenyan borders, and we're discussing those issues with a foreigner. A foreigner who has not been able to sort their own problems internally in their own country. Somalia is still a war zone. They're still fighting Al-Shabaab and other militia groups. Uh, how do we trust that they have come to Kenya, which is a very stable country, to, stab to help us stabilize a certain region? So in that regard, I read a lot of malice in the, in the, and the intentions in the entire process. They say they were sent by the president, but in the context under which it happened, was not the, uh, the proper way to go uh, through a port. Whether it was back channeling, track one, track two diplomacy, I don't think that's the right way to go. Uh, finally, there's, there has been one threat to Kenya and, uh, and Ethiopia in the recent past. 1963, we had the Shifta War. In the 1970s, we had the Ogaden War. And all of these, it was Somalias fighting Kenya and fighting in Ethiopia. And the biggest fear that Kenya and Ethiopia have when it comes to Somalia is the narrative of a greater Somalia. A great Somalia that involves and includes all those other groups that are in different countries, forming one united uh, Somalia, when all those five stars all come together. And that is a big threat to Kenya and Ethiopia as regional powers or wannabe regional powers. So in that regard, when these kind of visits happen, especially without involving the right departments, it looks like uh, it doesn't read well with, uh, with, 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 with Kenya and uh, other countries. Uh, therefore, I don't think it was the right way to do it for the members of parliament. They at least needed to be guided uh, in the ways to do it. They needed to involve the Minister of Foreign Affairs, they need to involve the parliament, they need to involve the Minister of Defense, because you cannot purport to go and negotiate for Kenya when those ministries are not there. Remember the chief negotiator is the president. And if it's not the president, the full powers have been given to the minister or the cabinet secretary of foreign affairs. So that in that regard, I don't think uh, those are the actions were, 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 were good. Indeed, I agree with my colleague Chris on the threat that uh, Kenya and Ethiopia faces from a united Somalia or the agenda that is not of issue, the greater Somalia issue. In the, that, and the, uh, that's one of the bases that Kenya and Ethiopia entered into what we call the Mutual Defense Pact, mm -hmm. that in case of an aggression from any other ent entity, Kenya and Ethiopia will come to each other's aid. And I believe by the time Haile Selassie and Jomo Kenyatta were forging that pact, they had Somalia in mind for one, and maybe other actors that we don't know beyond. And uh, the issues of the greater Somalia, in the Middle East we have the issues of the Kurds, who want to form the, the Kurd Kurdistan Republic, where they want to unite all the Kurds in Syria, in Turkey, in Iraq, in Iran. And they are facing a lot of resistance from that part. But we don't know if it's part of the agenda of the Somali uh, Republic at the moment. And on the issues of uh, this, the MPs' visit, I believe even if it, if it were to take the right path, like they went through the Parliamentary Service Commission, uh, the Parliamentary Commission on uh, Foreign Relations and Defense, it would have made sense. And by the fact that it's alleged, or it is said that they went and met the head of the Somali National Intelligence Service, it raises a lot of questions as to the nature. Why were they visiting? They say they visited the president, but they also met the head of the intelligence community in Somalia. So it's an issue that in the coming weeks it needs to be interrogated further for at least a lot to be understood over that matter. The Somali people transverse more than five countries. These people are like one people. They share one language, they share common values. It will be very difficult to separate them. So they went there on a good merit in a good merit to enhance peace and stability. J just a quick one to my colleague. Uh, was using the approach that they used, the first option, had they made contact with the Kenyan government, at least 
can you hand over this guy to us before we use the use the means that uh, was there any other route that they first pursued before deciding to approach it using force i, I think the issue that uh, the, the issue of Mandera and uh, those uh, military groups and the police, uh, the, the, the Somali uh, forces coming into Kenya. I think there's an issue now that we can call it water, water under the bridge uh, because the president of Somalia uh, read in the news that he called his counterpart in Kenya and uh, they have agreed to cease hostilities. But I don't think that's a far that we need to go. I think we also need to sit down and think of the best solution that we can come up with that can prevent, that, that can, can make sure that this relationship that we have, we have between Kenya and Somalia is a relationship that will not uh, backslide back to those issues of facilities again moving forward. The relationship between Kenya and Somalia is really at stake and we should not undermine our brothers. They are our neighbors. Keep in mind, remember the United, United Nations security seats that we are vying for. Somalia will, will totally help us get the vote that we really need. Thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe, share, like, and comment. See you next time.